What's going on guys, Dropaduski here. Today we're gonna to go over our day one T13 guide for the Demon Hunter for season 13. This, the free set that you're getting from Hedrix for the Demon Hunter is going to be the Shadow set. And I would say that this is probably the second strongest set that you're gonna get out of the Hedrix gift for the seasonal journey. And the other big benefit of starting with this setup is it's very, very easy to gear. Uh, you only have to roll a few pieces in order to get yourself up and ready to run T13. And as you, like as soon as you get the dagger and the set, you're gonna be ready to be doing T8, T9, T10, and you're gonna work your way up really, really quickly. So we're gonna keep this short and sweet and jump right into the gear. As I mentioned, you're gonna get the six piece shadow set. Uh, Impaled deals an additional 50,000 percent weapon damage for the first enemy hit this is a super super awesome damage buff and this build feels really good as you're playing it now the second thing that i would go for for this setup and i'm going to demonstrate this here quickly now um, you take some legendary daggers or some yellow rare daggers go in fill them up first roll Carly's Point, right? There's only two daggers you can get as a Demon Hunter, and Carly's Point is the one that's required for this setup. They're super, super easy to get, and once you have one, you're ready to go into, you know, T7, T8, right? All you need is this six-piece set and this dagger, and you're gonna be doing enough burst damage off of just that one dagger to kill packs in those torment levels. Going from there, the next thing you're gonna wanna go for upgrading in the cube is the Dawn. This Dawn item here reduces the cooldown of Vengeance by 65%. This is the item that's enabling Demon Hunters these days to basically stay in permanent Vengeance, and you're gonna wanna get this by upgrading rare one-hand crossbows in the cube. And while you're doing that, you're gonna be spending your Blood Shards at Kadala on either your belt or your quiver. Now you have two belts for this early season setup that I'm uh, running to do my T13s right away. The Gold Wrap, which uh, is there for survivability. When you couple that with Boon of the Hoarder, you're getting uh, massive amounts of tankiness from picking up gold. So you can get your Gold Wrap to keep you alive. Then you're gonna go for the Chain of Shadows. Now the Chain of Shadows after using Impale Vault costs no resource for two seconds. This is really really good quality of life item, but I would say early on in the season, if you don't have one of these and you only have a gold wrap, you can still go in and do pretty solid content right away. You're just not gonna move around as fast because you're gonna be running out of discipline as you're vaulting through the rift. So I would be upgrading Dawns in the cube and then rolling belts from Kadala. Once you have these things done, I would be doing all of my spending on the Holy Point Shot. That would be spending my Blood Shards on Kadala for Quivers and then upgrading those Quivers with Death's Breath until I get this thing. Impale throws two additional knives. So this basically triples the damage output, right? They all hit really, really hard to that first enemy hit. And so now that you're throwing three, they spread out and they do more damage as you're running through the rift. The other item that you're gonna need for this build is the elusive ring. Now the elusive ring gives you damage reduction. Let's just go ahead and read it real quick. After casting shadow power, smoke screen, or vault, take 60% reduced damage for eight seconds. This is going to be critical for survivability. I know we're gonna be using the gold wrap and the boon of the hoarder, so you're gonna get that tankiness from the gold but the elusive ring is 60% damage reduction. You really need this in order to make it work. And then from there, you're gonna get your nemesis bracers. So get your elusive rings by upgrading rare rings. And also once you have everything else, if you don't have it yet still, go ahead and roll rings from Kadala. Um, from there, there's only one piece of gear left to get. You've gotta get your nemesis bracers so that you get extra packs. And I believe we already went, yes, we already went over the elusive ring, so that's it. As you can see with my early setup here, I'm running two yellow rings and yellow amulet. So with those, that thing being said, of course, by the time you get everything else set up, you're gonna have gotten some legendary rings and a legendary amulet. Put on whatever has the best stats there. Of course, there are certain items that are gonna be helpful. You could get Convention of the Elements. You could get a Stone of Jordan to blow up packs. You can get maybe an immunity amulet or something along those lines that's gonna help really early on. But if you don't, if you have the worst RNG ever in season 13 and you don't get anything, I'm gonna show you that this will work without any other 
other ring other than the elusive ring. So once you're at this point, you're good to go, right? I do use white gems for extra survivability early on, and I use a white gem in the helm to give me more cooldown so that I have vengeance up more of the time. We're gonna go ahead and go through the abilities, and then I'll jump in a rift and show you how this thing works. Um, Impale Ricochet. The knife ricochets to two additional nearby enemies uh, within 20 yards. This is just better for speed farming. I would say you'd probably go cold or something like that if you were just hunting down packs. Uh, preparation Focus Mind. This will give you more discipline so that you can continue vaulting. Uh, shadow Power Gloom. Shadow Power, you get all of the runes with the shadow set, so you can just arbitrarily pick one, whichever one you'd like to use. Uh, vault Tumble. Then we're going to use Companion, Fair Companion. Now the Fair Companion collects gold for you, increases gold found on monsters by 10%, and also increases your movement speed. You could opt into the Wolf Companion here to do a little bit more damage if you're lacking in that area when you're running around in the four-man groups. But you can go ahead and take Fair because it's going to help with the survivability with the gold wrap and um, it's gonna help get you more gold early on in the season. And then Vengeance Seethe, gain 10 hatred per second when Vengeance is up. It's uh, super good early on. Um, the passives here will be Call of the Weak, then you'll be taking Thrill of the Hunt and Tactical Advantage. You gain 60% movement speed for two seconds after Vault, and then Ambush, deal 40% additional dam damage to enemies above 75%. So this is really, really designed around blowing up packs right when you get to them. Um, other than that, other little tips and tricks, make sure whenever you're using a gold wrap build to have a pet out immediately, especially with something like this, you may dive into a whole bunch of density, be throwing your daggers and as things die and gold is popping out, it's gonna grab that gold for you and make you tanky while you're in there so you don't instantly die. Uh, quickly, I'll touch on the legendary gems. We do have a level 25 Boon of the Hoarder, a level 25 Bane of the Trapped, and then a level 25 Bane of the powerful here. I also keep my gems low so that it's more realistic to the beginning of the season. And we're quickly going to jump into a rift just so I can demonstrate uh, that it will work and then we'll wrap everything up. So we'll go in immediately and get our vengeance up and hopefully it's not terrible mobs because if it is, uh, you will see some deaths. It just does happen early on with these setups when you don't have a lot of items or gear. But once the gold starts flowing and you can kind of stay near it, you should be okay, right? You should be able to kill packs pretty easily, keep yourself mobile and keep yourself alive. And that's kind of what you're going for early on, right? You just want to be able to start farming gear at a higher torment so that you can get better items and have a higher chance to getting legendaries early. Um, this build feels really fluid. It works really well. You're kind of just diving around and throwing daggers. I've always liked the shadow set. I really, really um, got excited when they fixed this a couple seasons ago and made it so that it actually does damage. And there was for a time there, the uh, <coughs> Demon Hunter was the RGK for one of the seasons because this build is so, so strong. So um, it's a really, really good Hedrix gift. It's something that's uh, really good for um, <clears throat> early farming. And it's right up there with the <clears throat> it's right up there with the early monk setup. Now the monk setup is you know leaps and bounds stronger than any other thing that we're getting and it seems like that always happens every season we always have one set that's really really strong where the others are you know somewhat mediocre and that's kind of the case right here with the shadow demon hunter but as you can see i mean in the t13 rift we're doing just fine with very little gear um i'm gonna go ahead and continue making these guides please uh comment in the in the bottom and let me know how you feel about these day one guides i know they're not the most optimal you know badass build that I can put out for said class, but I think what I run into the most in the Twitch stream is people looking for, you know, those things in between, right? Most of us YouTubers put out guides that say, hey, you know, here's a build. But how do we get from point A to point B? Well, the, the idea of these day one T13 guides are to get you from the moment you finish your Hedrick's gift into the highest content for rifts that you can farm really really fast and then from there you'll use this shadow set to farm up your uh on you know your ue set 
your Unhollowed Essence set and then start getting into multi-shot, right? And then multi-shot would be your standard speed farming build for the rest of the season on the Demon Hunter. Um, everybody, thank you guys so much for checking out this guide. Of course, if you have any questions, either hit me up in the comments below or stop by the Twitch stream anytime. We stream Monday through Saturday from noon MST until, you know, between 5 and 8 p.m. dependent on the day. Um, and pretty much every day is Diablo 3. Sometimes we do some raiding in World of Warcraft. That's typically on Tuesdays and Fridays in the evening. But even if I'm playing WoW and you have some Diablo questions, come on in and ask, dudes. It's twitch.tv slash Um Season starts Friday, February 23rd at 5 p.m. PST. I will be going live at 4.30 uh, 4.30 or 5 MST. Um, everybody, good luck in Season 13. Thank you for checking out this guide, and good luck in the griffs. Peace.